Welcome back, my duelist friends, casual duelist. Happy Friday. It's about time to get into the weekend. And we've got another deck very similar to how we refreshed Jinzo a little bit. Uh, we've refreshed this one. It feels like a lot of it. Again, it's going to be fairly similar to like last time, so no test hands. Um, also, went over 40 cards. I believe this one was 41 uh, at final count. And uh, got a bunch of fun stuff to do, so we need to get into this deck now. So Witchcrafters, guys. Haven't had a new one of these here in a while, um, but that's fine. Uh, we're going to start with two copies of Jedi. During the main phase, this quick effect, you contribute this card, discard one spell. Special summon one Witchcrafter from the deck with a different name. You can choose to banish this card in which one Witchcrafter spell from the graveyard. This effect becomes that spell's effect when that card is activated. Each effect once per turn. So again, very good. It's going to help us cycle, get a few more spell effects, but only the Witchcrafter spells. So do keep that in mind. Next up, we're going to need a single copy of the Witchcrafter Golem Aruru. Uh, when, that, when your opponent activates a card or effect that targets a spellcaster monster or monsters that you control, or targets it for an attack, as a quick effect, you may target one card your opponent controls, or a Witchcrafter spell in your graveyard. Special summon this card back to, or, spell, or sorry, special summon this from your hand, and if you do, return the targeted card to the hand. You can only use this effect once per turn, and once per turn during your opponent's standby phase, return this card to the hand. So again, she's always going to set herself up. No need to play more than one. Once you have it, you're in. And again, you can recycle your own spell cards or we can bounce the opponent's cards. Again, a little more effective when they're from the extra deck. Um, but still, we'll take it. Good effect, great effect. Next up, we're going to play two copies of Hain. Uh, she is a little unsummonable as a seven star. Um, so we're going to use effects to do this. Uh, your opponent cannot target other spellcaster monsters you control with card effects. Uh, as a quick effect, you may discard a spell, then target a face-up card the opponent controls to destroy it. Using this effect only once per turn. And again, the spot destruction is going to be more than enough control. Uh, two copies is, I think, the best as far as ratio. Trying to make sure that you always see this effect. Um, just how I feel about it. We are going to be playing the leader. The Witchcrafter Madame Ver, single copy, nice 8 star. During the damage calculation, if your spellcaster monster battles an opponent's monster, as a quick effect, you may reveal any number of spells with different names in your hand. If you do, your battling monster will gain 1,000 attack and defense per card revealed until the end of the turn. Also as a quick effect, you may discard one spell to negate the effect of all face-up monsters your opponent currently controls until the end of this turn. You may use each effect once per turn. So not only is she an absolute boss, but she can absolutely stun all the effects once per turn and just really help you juggle your opponent's expectations for what they're going to do. Next, we're going to have two copies of Pitor, And Pitor is going to be a three-star. During the main phase, as a quick effect, you contribute this card, then discard one spell to special summon one witchcraft or monster from the deck with a different name. And again, remember, this could be your Madame Ver. Very quick to the bosses with this deck. Uh, you may banish this from the graveyard to draw one card. Then send one Witchcrafter from the hand to the graveyard. Or, if you have none, banish your entire hand. Uh, each effect is once per turn. Very similar to uh, Allure of Darkness, uh, as far as how that's going to work. And then one of my favorites is Shmieta. And we will be running three copies of... <laughs> and what gets me every time is like this giant hammer wand thing. Like, it's just too cool. Uh, during the main phase, quick effect, tribute this card, then discard one spell. Special summon a witchcraft from the deck with a different name. You may banish this from the graveyard. Send one witch witchcrafter card from the deck to the grave with a different name. Each effect once per turn. Again, it's going to have the most base attack at 18. Uh, of all the lower star characters and again is going to help us just get into the larger cards the fastest after that i'm going to wrap up with five hand traps we're going to be playing uh, three copies of the uh, ash blossom joy spring and two copies of effect veiler again these are just kind of my favorites if you guys are looking to play another uh, hand trap girl as opposed to the effect veiler 
Um, Ghost Mourner and Moonlight Chill. Uh, you guys may or may not have a ton of copies like my buddy George does. This would be a perfect opportunity to start bringing those out and to just generate some big plays. It's going to be like Effect Veiler, but then again, if they get rid of the monster during the turn that you zap the effect, they also end up taking some burn damage. So it's different. I only have the single copy. Um, but that's it for the monsters. Uh, go ahead and take a screenshot or pause with the notes. And uh, I will be back with spells. And boy, oh boy, are there a ton. So just a moment. All right. And the Vanguard leading the way for our spells in this deck. We dusted off that change of heart again. Again, we need we need to be able to sort of like be able to build up to play any of our links or anything. So change of heart is going to be an excellent opportunity for us to do that. Um, and believe it or not, these next two cards, this comes from something I just saw in Master Duel. Or maybe it wasn't Master Duel. I just saw this somewhere. Um, and it was a really fun tac uh, tactic slash technique. It is three copies of Foolish Burial Goods with a single copy of Metal Foes Fusion. Now, I kind of wish I had known about this while I was doing the uh, Royal Magical Library set and trying to play my Exodia. But the big goal here is every time that you get the Foolish Burial uh, Goods, you want to throw the Metal Foes Fusion to the discard pile. We never use the Metal Foes Fusion because it only allows you to Special Summon, Fusion Summon, for Metal Foes monsters out of the extra deck. But the part that we want to do here is we can shuffle this back into the deck to draw a card. Now it's a once per turn effect, but what we've effectively done is we turn it into a uh, bit of a thinning and a small baby draw engine. And I thought it was really cool and this deck was like one of the first ones I was really able to toss it into. Look guys, if you don't want to do this, it's fine. Um, you literally drop this. Uh, change these three. Uh, what would I change them into? Like literally, call by the grave. Um, let me check what's left in my hand. Call by the grave, feather duster, and add another card of your choice. Could be a third effect veiler. Um, whatever you want. Uh, but I, I, I really wanted to give this a go, so that's what we're doing. Uh, single copy of the instant fusion. This is going to make sense when we get to the extra deck. And again, you guys probably saw the Shadal window. Uh, in the, what do you call that, the thumbnail. Uh, we are going to be running a single copy of the Monster Reborn because, again, it's great technique, and we do need to bring our monsters back, especially because we keep tributing them. Um, the extra deck can be kind of goofy. Um, some, of it, some of the times you use it, some of the times you really don't. Um, one thing I wanted to do was use my Pots of Extravagance to get a little more draw power. Um, and again, I sort of, like, tooled out my extra deck, um, just because I don't really tend to use it, but I'll tell you which ones that you could just maximize if you're worried about this and you just want to make sure that you get it as well as often. Uh, you know what I mean? Get it going as well as possible as often. Um, so again, certain cards can just be modified in their accounts, uh, depending on what you guys have. Uh, three Gekis, because again, we're allowed to have those in or change of heart. We might as well be running them right now. Um, again, I don't really fear too much back row um, for a little different the, a reason than I did with Jinzo. Uh, but it's just the Raigeki is so good. Reasoning, we have so many different levels in this deck. It's going to be very hard for your opponent to pick the correct level. So again, reasoning. And then we need to go over the Witchcrafter spells. So this is where things are going to get a little weird. Um, we got a single copy of By Street. Um, first time each witch, witch crafter you control would be destroyed by uh, would be destroyed each turn uh, by battle or effect. It is not, and you could use each of the following effects once per turn and only once that turn. Sorry, one of the following effects. So once per turn you get to choose. Uh, we could either if a witch crafter monster you uh, control would disc would discard to activate an effect. You could send this from the field to the discard instead, or during the end phase if you control a witch crafter while this is in the graveyard, place it back into the top. Or sorry, place it back face up in your spell trap zone. So again, it just sort of cycles. Uh, very similar to how the Golem Aruru does. So playing more than one feels cloggy. Um, so one. Uh, collaboration, single copy. Target a Witchcrafter you control. It can make a second attack during each battle phase this turn. Also, if it attacks this, uh, if it attacks this turn, 
The opponent cannot activate spell traps until the end of the damage step. So it sort of makes them as a double swinging ancient gear. Uh, during the end phase, if you control a witchcrafter while this is in the graveyard, you can add this back to your hand. You can only use one witchcrafter effect per turn and only once that turn. So again, kind of feels weird to play more than one. Uh, we are going to run two copies of Creation. And I'm going to set that one down. We're going to kind of do this. Add a Witchcrafter from the deck to the hand during the end phase. If you control a Witchcrafter while this is in the graveyard, you may add this to the hand. You may only use one effect per turn and only once that turn. Two, because we do want to see it. Not three, because we don't want to see it too often since we can recur it. Uh, next up is going to be a pair of three ofs. So we're going to be talking about Holiday first. Target a Witchcrafter in the graveyard. Special summon it during the end phase. If you control a Witchcrafter while this is in the graveyard, you may add this card to your hand. You may only use one of these effects per turn and only once that turn. So again, we do want to maximize this one uh, as it is more like the Monster Reborn for us and will help us cycle and build boards. And then three copies of Unveiling. Unveiling being our Quick Play Spell card that is apparently going to hit just enough glare. So let's just move the camera just a tinge and let's check out the effect. Uh, special summon one witchcrafter monster from your hand, and if you do, the opponent cannot activate cards or effects in response to the activation of your spellcaster monster effects for the remainder of this turn. Uh, during the end phase, if you control a witchcrafter monster while this is in the graveyard, you may add this back and you may only use one effect or the other per turn. So again, pretty cool. And for the last card, it is a trap card. We're going to be using one copy of Patronus. Uh, and again... I don't know, last time I think I used Masterwork. Patronus is definitely good. Continuous. Uh, can target one of your spellcaster casters that is banished or in the graveyard. Shuffle back to deck if do. Add one Witchcrafter spell from deck to hand. If is in grave, except turn sent there. Banish, then target any number of banished Witchcrafter spells with different names. Add them to the hand. Each effect once per turn. And again, this really feeds back into Madame Vare's like absolute control aspect so guys quick screenshot or pause take the notes that is the rest of the deck i'm gonna get come back with the extra deck next so in a moment all right guys so i'm gonna run through the list of the extra deck first and then i'm going to say which ones can be modified uh just this way you always pull the correct cards uh, as opposed to me playing all my good stuff. So for the fusions, we're playing El Shadal Winda at 1. Kami, email me, buddy. I haven't heard from you in a bit in the comments section. I know you got busy. I got a request for you personally, and I figured uh, asking after putting a Shadal card on my table would be the best way. Um, Shadal Winda's effect uh, must first be special summoned or fusion summoned. Uh, cannot be destroyed by an opponent's card effects. Each player can only special summon monster monsters once per turn. While this is faceable on the field, if this card is sent to the graveyard, target a Shadal spell trap in the graveyard, add it to your hand. Again, we'll instant fuse to get it out as a good control aspect. Another one that we're going to want is Millennium Eyes Restrict. Um, again, once per turn, when the opponent activates a monster effect, uh, as a quick effect, target a mon effect monster the opponent controls or in their graveyard. Equip that target to this card. Gain attack and defense equal to the equipped monsters. Uh, and monsters with that same name as the equipped card to this can no longer attack or activate their effects. Effects become negated. So, again, the hand trap gets discarded to do something. Millennium Eyes Restrict picks it up out of the discard pile and in turn negates the effect afterward. And you guys know Thousand Eyes Restrict. Um... Again, these could all go up to twos. Um, things that you could take out would be Appaloosa and Boral Sword and um, Daybreaker. These are just for fun. You guys could take out the IP Mascarena, the Cerberus, the Phoenix, and the Unicorn. You guys would probably want to uh, maximize out the Anima. Uh, just getting three Animas real quick. So again, this takes out these. Um, the next two as well. Salamangrate Al Mirage just has a great uh, countering effect. Uh, I'm running two Selenes uh, because of the effect and being able to special summon the spellcasters. And of course, 
the single underworld goddess. So again, you guys can maximize out whichever sets you want, whichever ones you think are going to be the best. Again, it's like three, six, uh, nine. That's probably it on the uh, links. Um, then you could choose two of these, or uh, you could just go to each uh, nine and the six should end up at the 15. Um, but this is the extra deck, the way that I play it, because again, sometimes I draw into the way extravagance, sometimes I don't. Um, and I just like to show that, you know, it's good to be okay and prepared for everything, um, even though you may not play towards everything. So that is the deck. Again, call me, email me, buddy. Um, everybody else, uh, you know, have a lovely day. Thanks for stopping by. If you guys would like to support the channel, like, comment, possible, subscribe, share it with your friends, do all of the things, do none of them. Do me one favor for sure. Go out and try to have yourselves a great day. And I hope to see you guys on the next deck, uh, which again is tomorrow. Oh my goodness. We're going to have the Gate Guardian and I don't know yet if we're going to be doing Bastion or Cyrus. Um, whichever one we don't do to, uh, tomorrow, we will definitely be covering on Sunday. All three of those will be their three-time structure builds. So guys, have a great day. Look forward to the weekend. And I hope to see you guys later. Peace.